Hey fellow homesteaders, gardeners, and cooks. Welcome to Miles Away Farm. My name is Jennifer and I am making a fermented hot sauce. We have a, an abundance of hot peppers right now and I've got a bunch of jalapenos and so I'm mostly going to work with those. Did you know that the famous sriracha sauce um, with the rooster on the bottle is actually just made from ripe jalapenos. That is the only ingredient um, in terms of peppers. Uh, and so I am just going to show you how to do a fermented hot sauce. Um, I've been making hot sauce for years. I've done a variety of different methods. Um, I really like the fermented version. Um, I ferment it and then I add vinegar at the end to stabilize it. Um, it really is imperative when you do this um, that you have a scale um, because what we're going to be doing is adding salt as a percent of the total weight of our peppers um, and so having a scale is a very handy thing i'm doing this mostly with ripe peppers but there are a few that are just starting to turn that i'm throwing in the batch as well the nice thing about this recipe is it doesn't matter. You don't have to weigh what you've got. You just work with what you have and then take a percentage of that weight. So you could make, you know, a half a cup of this. You could make a gallon of this. You could make five gallons of this. It's all based on percentage. Um, yeah, so let's get slicing here. All right, I'm about done here. And you could make this with any pepper, um, green or red. I like the red for the color and also because red peppers are a little bit naturally sweeter. Um, and I should probably be wearing gloves doing this, but because I'm not taking the seeds out, I'm not getting a ton of exposure here. And then I've got a few left here. I'm also gonna make some cowboy candy and um, Because I give cowboy candy a lot of times as Christmas gifts, I really like to um, throw a couple of red ones in the mix just because it's so pretty with that red and green. So I'm gonna save out these bigger red um, jalapenos for the cowboy candy that we're gonna make next. Okay, so this is what we ended up with. And we're just gonna put this in a food processor. If you had a powerful blender, you could also do this in a blender. Or you could just really finely hand chop this. Um, the finer you chop it, the more surface area, the faster it's going to ferment. Um, you can leave it fairly chunky if you don't have the patience or you don't have the, the power tools, so to speak. Um, it will ferment regardless. I just like to uh, turn it into a pulp because I think it ferments quicker. All right, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna weigh that. And I'm gonna work in grams just because it's much easier to figure out percentages when you're working in grams than it is when you're working in ounces. That looks gorgeous. And you could actually add other things to this. I always just do this as a straight chili, um, but you could put in onion and garlic and ferment that along with it if you wanted to. Um, there's lots of ways to play around with this. Um, I like to, because every batch of chili is a little bit different, I like to ferment it and then taste the result and then amend it accordingly. And sometimes we will add um, like a smoked dried chili, like a chipotle or a smoked paprika. Sometimes we add cumin. Um, we often add some garlic. Sometimes we add a little bit of sugar. Um, this is all after it's finished fermenting. Um, and sometimes we don't add anything other than salt 
um, and that's all we need. So it just depends on the chilies. Um, and because every batch is different and sometimes I'm mixing lots of different kinds of chilies together, um, I like to wait until then. So we have 876 grams of chilies. So that gives me uh, a little over 26 grams of salt. And I wanna use canning salt here. Or some kind of salt without iodine. All right, so I need 26 grams. 26 grams is not that much. Um, and so be careful as you're, like if I were to just upend the, the box here and start adding, it's really easy to go over. And a lot of ferments will be in the 2% range. Um, we're going a little bit higher than that just because chilies are notorious for kind of getting a little funky, um, especially when you grind them like this, there's a lot of surface area. Um, and so we're gonna add a little bit more salt. It's gonna slow down the fermentation. Um, it's not gonna ferment quite as fast, but it's also less likely to grow um, any bad bacteria that might be on these. Um, before the good bacteria has a chance to get a foothold. And so um, I would rather do a slow ferment. Generally, rule of thumb is a slow ferment. You know, obviously it takes longer. You've got to have more patience, but the flavor is often better. And so um, I like to do a little slower ferment on these as opposed to something like a sauerkraut where I'm going to ferment it really quickly. All right, we're going to give that a stir. And all that salt is going to immediately start drawing out moisture. And while that's happening... I'm gonna go get a jar. We'll, we'll see where we end up, either a quart or a half gallon. I'm not sure which yet. Okay, I decided to go with a half gallon jar. Um, I could probably get this in a quart jar, um, but what happens is when a ferment is active, um, it will generate a lot of gas and sometimes the jar itself will overflow just because of all the activity that's in there. It's a little bit like a sourdough in that way. And so basically you need to give it room to grow. Um, and I've had issues more than once where I put it in a jar that I thought had plenty of room and then ended up not having plenty of room. Particularly in the summertime when my house is a little warmer, um, things tend to ferment pretty quickly. So... I'm gonna do a half gallon jar and that way it'll have plenty of room if it needs to expand. Usually I would use a rubber spatula for this, but all of my rubber spatulas are in the dishwasher right now. This is the season of stuffing food into jars. You want all of your equipment here to be really clean. Um, I don't think you have to sterilize everything just because um, there's going to be plenty of natural bacteria on that pepper, um, good guys and bad guys. And so it's a little overkill to try to sterilize everything, um, just to immediately recontaminate it with whatever was on the peppers. Um, but you do want everything to be really clean. Um, this jar that I'm using, um, just recently got, went through my dishwasher. And so it's pretty clean. And I always run the sanitize on my dishwasher for reasons like this, because I'm often doing things where I need it to be extra. Um, you can do this with um, an actual brine um, where you add additional liquid to it. And I may end up making a 3% brine and just adding some liquid to this. Um, the tricky part here is basically you want all of your pepper pulp to be below the um, level of the liquid. What happens is if anything is above that liquid level, it tends to um, be more exposed to the air and then therefore f um, sometimes it will mold. And so pepper ferments are tricky because of that because you've got a million tiny little pieces and a million tiny little seeds 
So we're going to let this sit. I'm going to let this sit for an hour or two and just see how much liquid is released. Um, and then I will come back to it. And if I need to add some additional liquid, I will. The one problem with these half gallon jars is the, um, the little pusher that I am using right here. It's not really perfect for a half gallon jar. It works much better on a quart jar. Yeah, you can see there. So I have exactly four quarts. That would be a little tricky. All right, I'm just gonna set this in here and see what it looks like in a couple of hours. And then I'll make a call about whether or not I wanna do additional liquid in there. You can see the liquid kind of gushing up. Um, you can do ferments with just, you know, a towel over the top of the jar. It's a lot of oxygen, and the more oxygen you have, the more likely that um, something is gonna get introduced that you don't want to get introduced. And there's a lot of things that will feed in an oxygen-rich environment that will not feed and multiply in a less oxygen-rich environment. So I like to use a water lock. I can't put that on right now because that thing's in the way. Um, I'll set that aside and do that later. So I'm creating, uh, it's obviously not completely anaerobic because there's oxygen in the jar itself, um, but I'm generally trying to keep less, less free-floating oxygen from the air out of the jar, if that makes sense. So yeah, we'll check back in a couple hours and see what that looks like. All right, you guys, following up the next morning on our uh, fermented chilies, um, there isn't enough liquid in there and I'm really worried that it's gonna mold. And so what I'm gonna do is make myself a 3% brine um, and I'm going to top it off a little bit with some liquid and then I'm also gonna fill a Ziploc bag with that same 3% liquid and pack it down on top so that it acts as a vapor barrier and pushes all of that stuff down. Um, this is the one problem with doing um, fermented chilies is they float and so they're just kind of notoriously difficult. Unfortunately, that pusher that I have in there is not really designed. It's designed for a quart jar. It's not designed for a half gallon jar. And so it's not effective enough. If I had used it in a quart jar, it would have worked, but I had too much um, volume for that. What I have here is 200 grams of filtered water and I'm gonna add a 3% salt to that. So 3% of 200 grams is six grams. And so I'm going to just zero my scale out here and add six grams of salt, which is not going to take very much. Salt is surprisingly heavy. There we go. Let me give that a good stir so it's dissolved. Still a little bit in the bottom. And there's a whole thing in the fermented community about not using metal utensils in your ferments. I have no idea what that's about. Um, I think it's total BS. Um, it makes no sense to me, and I've never seen a good explanation of it. Um, so I just ignore it. All of my <coughs> utensils are stainless steel. They are not going to react with the acid. So I just go ahead and use my metal utensils. You can see there is some liquid here. Um, but not enough. Um, all of those little pieces, parts are going to float as this thing starts to ferment and make um, just lots and lots of opportunities for mold. I am going to tamp this down one more time just to see if I can pack it down as much as I possibly can. I just recently got this tamper. Um, it's called, a, I think it's called a cabbage tamper or ferment tamper. Um, I really like it. It's definitely not a must-have thing, um, but it is it is nice. What I'm trying to do here is get every little tiny speck that is sticking to the walls down into the mass that's there so that there isn't anything sticking up that can mold. So I'll get that as flat as possible. And I'm just going to I'm going to use this spoon as a to slow down the liquid here. I'm just going to very gently cover that with my 3% brine. Maybe just 
just a tiny bit more. There we go. So now we've got maybe a quarter of an inch um, of liquid on top of that mash, which is what we want. I probably could have made more of the liquid brine. In fact, I probably should. So I'm gonna stop and do that real quick here. All right, I went ahead and made up another 200 gram mix of salt and brine. The reason that you put a brine in your bag that is really just there to hold everything down is if for some reason this leaks, you want it to not be diluting your brine. And so by putting a 3% brine in the bag, um, you're preventing that from happening in case it leaks because, you know, Ziplocs are notorious for that kind of thing. Now the tricky bit is getting this into the jar in some kind of organized fashion because I really would like it to lay sideways and that's always tricky. All right. I'm just going to use my fingers and do what I can here to get this even. It's okay if it's, that looks good. Let me turn this so you can see. So some of it's above the water, some of it's below, but what I'm not seeing is a lot of like little floaty bits of pepper at the water line. And that's really what I'm trying to prevent here. So that looks pretty good. All right, now I am going to put my airlock on. And you can buy these airlocks at um, brewery supply stores. You can order them online. They're really common. Anybody who makes beer, if you have a beer making store in your community, um, they're going to have these. And you just, it's a, it's a water lock is what it is. And so basically gas can go out but it can't go in and so this is our lid that lid has a rubber gasket and a hole in the center of it and then i'm just going to insert my water lock in there and it's a two-piece let me come around if you can see this there we go so it's a two-piece there's a little bit of a cap in there and the air bubbles up into that cap and then if there's enough pressure it pushes its way out the bottom and then out the top of the, the cap so air is not getting in but gases can escape um, and we're just going to put a date on this and set it in our kitchen window and keep an eye on it and we'll let it ferment for um yeah we'll see what it looks like in a week all right we started this Fermented hot sauce on the 3rd of September. It is now the 21st of September. Um, so it's actually been several weeks. Um, I probably could have done this a week ago, but I was um, on vacation and out of town. So I did open it once and kind of push down the contents a little bit and released a lot of the pressure that was in there when I did that. This is the the bag of brine that we had on there as a weight. Thankfully it did not pop a hole, but I did put actual brine in the bag just in case. And this white that you see on the edge here, this is cam yeast. Uh, it's harmless, um, but it, some people object to the taste of it. I don't actually mind it but I'm gonna just do my best here to wipe what little bit there is of that off. There's really not very much, we did pretty good. And that cam yeast is um, something that grows due to uh, exposure to oxygen. And so it's something that forms, at least I think so, I'll double check that. And so it will often form on the surfaces of the thing that you're fermenting. And the longer it ferments, the more likely you are to get that um, the more um, you can keep oxygen out, the less likely you are to have that 
Um, and actually, more importantly, the more you keep things submerged. So this is a stick blender. You could take this and um, put it in a regular blender and grind it up. Um, I like using a stick blender because it's really quick. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm just going to pulp this up. And I think I'm going to put a little bit of this brine in here just to give that a little bit more of a liquid so that it grinds easier. This is a surprisingly not very juicy batch. And thankfully, the seeds of the um, peppers are generally hard enough that they don't actually grind. We'll see what happens here. But what I'm going to do is pulp this up as much as I can. And then I'm going to put it through a sieve to get out the seeds and some of those skins. I was looking for is a little bit more movement when the stick blender is on. All right. This is a fairly new stick blender to me, and it does look like it's maybe grinding some of those seeds. It's not going to hurt anything. I could not. I have a KitchenAid, ancient KitchenAid stick blender, and I could not find the bottom to it. I've done something clever with it, and... So I'm switching over to this one, and I haven't used this very much. I'm not as familiar with it. And you could filter this in a lot of different ways. Um, this is a chinois um, that I picked up at an estate sale, and I really love it. Um, but you could do this with cheesecloth. Um, you could do this with just a, a regular thing like this. Um, or you could just not do it at all and leave it as chunky as it is right now, which is totally fine. I'm trying hard not to get this on my hands because I'll be feeling it for the rest of the day if I do. And this fermented, I think it fermented fairly quickly um, at the beginning because the house was pretty warm. We were having a surprisingly warm spell for late August, early September. And so my guess is this is a little bit more, um, it fermented pretty quickly and then it didn't do much that second week. Um, but it didn't hurt it to sit. And there are people who will ferment this kind of thing. They'll add more salt and ferment it for, you know, a, six months or a year. So there's definitely a lot of different ways that you can go here in terms of how fermented you want this. This chinois was one of those things that I'd seen, you know, on chef shows and things like that. And it I always wanted one, and they're just, I don't know why they're so expensive, but they're ridiculously expensive. And so I never bought one. Um, and then I was at an estate sale and found this and was so psyched. And now I kind of wish I'd actually just bothered to buy one because they are really wonderful. Um, I find them so much easier than trying to put something through a, a mesh sieve. And because you're ap applying pressure with this um, pusher, you really get things pretty dry. And if I accidentally spill a little of this over into the hot sauce, it's not going to be a big deal. And crazy as it may seem, the leftover pulp goes to my chickens. Um, chickens don't have the ability to taste capsaicin. And so um, actually wild chilies have evolved to be spread by birds. 
whereas they're too hot for mammals to eat them. Uh, but the birds don't notice the heat. And so, um, yeah, this is going to be a great treat. Nice probiotic for my chickens. And uh, they won't be bothered by the heat in this at all. All right, that's looking pretty darn dry, which is what I wanted. You can see how dry that is. So we basically extracted everything that was in there fairly quickly. You know, if you do this with cheesecloth or um, other things and just let it slowly drip, you know, you can leave it there for all day before you get it as dry as this is. The other thing I like about this besides the speed is we tend to have a lot of fruit flies in the house this time of year. It's just unavoidable. And so if I were to leave this just sitting out on the counter, there would be fruit flies in it um, by the ridiculous amount. And so it's nice that this is quick because... I'm not going to end up with a bunch of fruit flies. Oops. All right. That's about as far as we're going to get with that. So now we have some very nice fermented pepper pulp without any seeds or skins. And then what I do, I don't want this to continue to ferment. I don't want to have to worry about it. Um, having cam yeast grow on it. Um, which has happened to me in the past when I haven't done this. So you could just, you know, leave it right now and throw it in the fridge and it's edible. It's ready to go. Um, not wildly hot. Mm. Very nice. Oh yeah, there's a little heat in there. Um, but what I do is I add vinegar and I do one part vinegar to four parts um, pulp. And so right now I have about three and a half cups of vinegar or about 800 grams. It's gonna be easier to figure this out in grams. And so I'm gonna add 25% vinegar to that mix. And you can use whatever vinegar you like as long as it's 3% or 5% vinegar. Um, Depending on the year, sometimes I use white vinegar, sometimes you use apple cider vinegar. I think this is an apple cider vinegar to year. Um, feels like that could use just a touch of sweetness, so I'm gonna go grab the vinegar and I'll be right back. All right, because I'm weird and inattentive, I decided to actually weigh this. So this is 889 grams of pulp, and I'm gonna add um, 222 ounces of vinegar, and I figured since we have a probiotic hot sauce, this is actually a vinegar, apple cider vinegar with the mother, so it's a probiotic vinegar, so why not? So we want 222. And going over a little bit, definitely not gonna hurt anything. Um, you don't wanna go under. 25% vinegar is gonna bring that acidity down it's already pretty low because of the fermentation, but this is gonna bring it down to an area where um, it's gonna preserve it and um, so that you don't end up with any more cam yeast growing on it. And then from here, um, right now this is just salt, peppers, a little bit of water, and some vinegar. Um, this is the point where you start to kind of taste it. And you gotta be kind of hardcore in order to be able to do that. Um, but you want to taste it and ask yourself, does it need more salt? Does it need more acid? Um, does it need a little sugar? Often a little sugar is not a bad thing. Maybe just a touch of sugar. I'm going to do a little brown sugar just because I feel like the caramelization flavor in there is going to go well. And then the other thing, this is the point where if, if you didn't ferment it with garlic or onion, you could add garlic powder, you could add onion powder. 
And I'll put a link to the original um, recipe that I'm riffing on from here. And they have a bunch of different versions depending on um, what you want to do and what flavor profile you want. But I really think you need to taste it because every year your peppers are going to taste a little bit different. They're going to have a little bit more or less sweetness um, depending on the weather and the soil and, you know, how ripe they were when you picked them. Um, and the variety, obviously. You could make this with all kinds of different peppers. Um, we often do an end-of-season hot sauce that is just all the ripe peppers at the end of the season. Um, and we mix them all together and make a hot sauce. And then we really play around with doing a lot of tasting. Um, this one is all jalapeno, so it's going to be... Um, the heat is going to be very front of the mouth because of that. Hmm. Yep. I think that's about right. My husband's better at this, and he also eats way more of it than I do. And so I often um, let him taste this and give me an opinion. Unfortunately, he has just left for a small vacation, and so we will just have to wing it without him. But that's it. Um, basically, you're done. We're going to put this into some jars, and um, it'll be ready to go. I'm going to put this in swing top bottles. I normally order um, five-ounce hot sauce bottles and put it in that and sometimes give it as Christmas gifts. But I have not been able to get five ounce hot sauce bottles um, for over a year due to supply chain issues. So we end up using these swing top, which work. They're just a little more awkward for distribution. And if you wanted to thicken this, I generally don't. Um, it will separate and sometimes need a good shake before you use it. But um, you can add xanthan gum, and you can look up details on how to do that. Um, but xanthan gum is often used in hot sauces in the store. Um, and so that is typically what you use if you want it to have a thicker viscosity. Um, if I had not added that water when I was blending, this would be slightly thicker, but I'm not worried about it. I kind of want it to be sort of thin. This was a couple years ago, and this is a, I think that's an eight ounce bottle. I can't remember. I'm just gonna top this off um, with what's left here. going to regret that later. <coughs> and you do not need to heat this when you before you bottle it. Um, between the natural bacteria and yeast that's in there and then the um, vinegar that we added, it should be shelf stable for refrigeration without actually having to um, heat it first. And honestly, even though it says refrigerate, I have used this, um, I've put this on the shelf and not had any issues with it. Um, you can heat it if you want to, um, if you're definitely planning on putting it on a shelf, um, you can heat it and then bottle it um, as a way of, of adding extra, but that will kill all of your probiotics. Um, which was kind of half the point of doing a fermented hot sauce. So you can make your own decisions there. So there you have it, Tribe. This year's round one of Miles Away Farm hot sauce. Um, this is basically a sriracha, although we didn't add any garlic. And so there's sriracha without garlic. Um, yeah, brilliant first attempt. And we'll probably do another one before the season is out with the last of the garden peppers. Thanks for watching. Hey girls, what have I got for you? I got first plums and now chilies.
turkeys seem to be all about it. 